Zoom. Huh? Okay. Good morning. Jenna's looking. Okay. Good morning. This is the Columbia Open Space Committee regular meeting on Thursday, February 15th, 2024 at 9 a.m. I will entertain motion to approve the minutes of January 18th. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? One abstention. Okay. Audience of citizens. Nothing. All right. Updates. Honor has not chimed in, has she? No. No? Okay. I, uh, Kelly Wasty has COVID and will not be with us this mm -hmm. morning, but I have a report. Um, did you get that? Honor, uh, Honor did just ping him. Did she? Good. Yeah. Okay. Kelly reports that both contracts have been signed between TPL and D and TPL. And IMBA, International Mountain Biking Association. Uh, so they're ready to move forward and on um, the master trails plan with IMBA. And um, she will send an update as soon as she has the timeline for that work. Okay. If that means it's all approved and yeah. ready to ready to go. Oh exactly. Yep, that's amazing. Okay, is Honor in here? She Honor, are you on now? Yes, I can't. The video's not working. Um it says it failed to start the video camera, but um I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yep. Great. Um, sorry, I was having trouble logging in, but um, it sounds like Anne, you let them know about the contract and all that, which is yep. ready to go. What? Ready you go. let them know about the IMBA contract, it sounded like. Yes, yes. Oh, great. Yes, very exciting. There were some growing pains with, I think, getting that, uh, getting everything executed because of some of the terms and things, but it, um, and TPL is a little bit of a middleman in this situation, but um, very exciting, ready to move forward. Um, I know Callie is coordinating with Imba on timing and, and that kind of thing. And she's going to be helping out a lot on this one. So yeah. Good. Um, you want to tell us about Camp Laurel? I do, yes. Um, while not in Colombia, may perhaps relevant to this group um, in the event that we are able to get the state interested in adding it to Mono Pond State Park, or you know, if not added to Mono Pond State Park as as a separate state-owned parcel, um, you know, there we had proposed this to the state a, a while ago, and uh, it took us a little bit bit of time to get under contract. And when we brought it back to the state of Connecticut, they said um, that they they had other priorities, um, which they were going to be using the funds that would otherwise be available for something like Camp Laurel. They were going to be using those on, you know, infrastructure improvements, deferred maintenance at existing state parks and things like that, which is, you know, of course, necessary. Um, we're way behind. I know the state DEP is way behind on deferred maintenance and things like that, um, but also unfortunate for the Camp Laurel project. And so we we thought that Joshua's Trust might be another option uh, land as landowner. And so we've been talking to them and we were ready to apply for some grant funding that would um, 
pave the way for acquisition capital. And it turned out that Joshua's Trust um, just really wasn't comfortable with the uncertainties around the dam and the infrastructure. And so they've um, backed out um, politely from, from the partnership. And so we are, I went to the, Ann and I both went actually to the Lebanon Conservation and Agriculture Commission meeting um, a week and a half ago. And the town is, is just not, not capable of owning the land. And so we are, our sort of last resorts are either going to Avalonia Land Conservancy, which um, I need to make a call and see how the conversation went with um, someone who's going to reach out to them and then, you know, or, or pitching it back to the state. And so Senator um, or Representative Kathy Austin was at that meeting and she was going to do a little digging um, at the Capitol to see if there's interest and, and what have you. And so the latest that I have is um, that sh there is a bill proposed right now in the legislative session for up to a million dollars in bonding for Camp Laurel. And that's been proposed by Kathy Austin. She's the sponsor. And um, this came as, you know, a little bit of a surprise because I, uh, but, but you know, anyone can propose a bill. And what we hope to do now is sort of a campaign of sorts to, to try and get that through the legislature and to the bonding commission. And, you know, TPL has, has to be very careful about how we lobby and make sure that we uh, follow, you know, all the campaign finance laws and all the lobby laws that um, are applicable to nonprofits and, and so we will we will navigate that. Um, but the the thing that we're going to have to do is you know figure out how we get other legislators to um, join the bill, and so they can attach themselves to it. They can support it. We would love it to be you know bipartisan support, and to. For, you know, it will require residents advocating to their legislature legislators um, to support that because everybody's, you know, when it comes to bonding, everybody's got a dog in the fight in their own communities. And so we just need to figure out if we can get enough support to get this thing through. And, you know, oftentimes a bill will go to a committee and just die. And, and that's that. Um, but we're hoping that, that this one, um, you know, can get some traction and, and proceed all the way. I just, I have no, um, I, I'm not sure how realistic that is. I, you know, this is sort of very new to me right now. It would, I just found out about it um, on Monday. So that's, that's the story of Camp Laurel where I'm, I've got a call scheduled with um, the state to, to revisit now that this bill is um, in front of the legislature and, and talk through our our options and how the DEP is going to approach this now that it's um, it's gotten some political um, backing. You know, you know, honored. What you really need is some marketing. You need <laughs> to address it the way the Boy Scout camp in Killingly was. Like developers are going to take this property and ruin it if the state doesn't <laughs> buy it. You know and. <laughs> That's what saved the Boy Scout thing. <laughs> That's wrong language. Uh, Honor, yeah. does this bill have a number yet? It does. And I'm going to share that with you in two minutes once it loads on my on my phone. Um so yeah, so so part of the bill will be public testimony. And um to that and you know, anyone can provide public testimony to support a bill. And so we would encourage everyone and anyone that cares about this property to, um, you know, to, to think about whether that's something that they would do. The bill is proposed Senate bill number 63. 
an act authorizing bonds of the state to purchase Camp Laurel and Lebanon as open space. And I can send you all the link and there's the um, the pro proposed bill. Um, the text of the bill is is available there too. So. Good. Um, it, I, I, I look forward to that. Um, and we'll work with uh, Lebanon's conservation group to get a letter writing campaign going. Um, Great. Have you, you must know Amy Lamo Patterson. Yes, yes. And we will be reaching out to her to talk about this. We'll be reaching out to alumni of the Girl Scouts. We'll be reaching out to um, folks that we think would have a vested interest, folks that care about state goals of, you know, protected land, state parks, all of that. Um, but it's, and, and we're going to have to be very quick. So, you know, this is a, I think a sh shorter legislative session, um, but I would, I don't know how long we have um, before. I know this was referred to the finance committee. Um, I think it has a longer name than that. It, it was referred to the joint committee on finance, revenue and bonding. And um, so, so I'm not, this isn't my forte, how these things flow through the, the you know how a bill becomes a law right or how a bill gets bonded um but i'm going to work with amy and we have a lobbyist at the capitol his name's mike and he is going to help us navigate this and let us know what we can do what we can't do and and what we should do and who we should reach out to and so we'll be um scheduling that meeting very soon and i will definitely be in touch with all of you if there are things that would be helpful. Good. And in addition, I'll, I'll get in touch with Amy. Great. You can, but I will too. That's great. Okay. Stakeholder meeting. Go ahead. Is there any plans now that the contracts are signed to get together the stakeholders or the proposed stakeholders from Monopon? With Imba? Yeah. So so the very first step was getting that contract signed. Um, and, and TPL met with Kim Bradley and who is, you know, in charge of the Rec Trails grant program. And so we we sort of thought of that as the kickoff meeting. And there will be there will be lots of time for stakeholder meetings, public input, all of that stuff um will will happen and imba will be facilitating some of those tpl will be a partner but you will absolutely have a chance to to be involved in that it just is not scheduled yet okay have you heard uh for the airline trail i had heard that ctrcd had signed a contract with the state to move forward with the master plan but i haven't seen anything in writing anywhere so I was, I, I know that the RCND um, received a, a rec trails grant in, in a past, I think maybe last year to do the master, the airline state park master plan. Um, and so I referenced that um, in, an, in an application I was putting together for Camp Laurel actually. And so that has been completed um, in, in terms of, we might be talking about different things, Tom, um, but there's a plan that talks about the goals. And so connectivity, recreational opportunities, spurring off the trail, um, you know, economic development along the trail that is outdoor recreation oriented. You know, there are all sorts of goals and priorities that are listed in that plan. I don't know if that's what you're referring to. Yeah, yeah but, the, the actual yeah. next step with that was I, my understanding was that they were going to get some funding to go to the next step because there's been no meetings or anything in probably a year now. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm not certain of what's happening there. Okay. Kim Kim would probably know though, or Jean Davies or someone who's, you know, more intimately associated with that project. Yeah, I just 
that was one of those things as, as Imba starts moving forward, if that group really is up and running again, that they'd be involved as a stakeholder because of the shared one mile boundary between the two parks. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Um, I, for me, I think, I think the big thing that's, that's hovering over, <laughs> hovering over, um, me is, is this bill and figuring out how we, we get that through or figuring out what, what's going to happen there. And, and so, um, I'll be working on that. Callie will be paying attention to IMBA and scheduling the thing, the, meetings with stakeholders the you know kickoff meeting with imba and and the state and um i am sure she'll be in contact with you guys as as things move along there well i don't know if you had heard at all that friends of mono pond uh filed a request for a grant at the end of january the grant for the control of aqu aquatic invasive species for mono pond okay um, and our grant request was for 50,000 where we'd be responsible for, I think, 12,500. So I don't know how long that's going to take to be acted on, but at least we're in the process, which may or may not. Oh, that's great. May or may not be something where IMBA would want to know about if we get it or if we um, don't. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, natural resource management is definitely top of mind for them as they put together this trails plan, you know, the pond, um, you know, if there are sensitive resources there, I, I mean, I don't, th there's probably not a vector from bicycles, you know, people aren't biking into the pond and, you know, bringing invasive species in, but it's still good to, to know that if, if there are sensitivities around the pond or anything like that, they'll, I'm sure, be right, interested I'll send in that. you a copy of what, what we submitted. Great. <laughs> Anybody else have a question for Honor? I just have a question about the dam. The, the dam at Camp Laurel had been such a stumbling block for so long. Had it ever been discussed to just breach it? Yes, yes, we've discussed that. That was um, obviously the the sort of most intuitive thing that that folks were saying. Well, you know, what if we just breach it? It's it's brought down every year, and so when Joshua's Trust went out there to tour the property and they talked to the to the ranger, uh, my understanding is that he he made it clear that you know, even in its fully breached condition, it was still impounding water. And so it is, you know, when, if a, if you let a dam out, right, like put, put the, open the valves um, and it's not impounding water, then it begs the question of if it's really a dam and there's, you know, some engineering work that could be done there to assess the drainage basin, the hundred year storm events, like how does, how does this dam um, impound water during a hundred year storm. And, you know, what is the drainage basin, the cubic square feet of water that it's, um, that are flowing through the dam. And so there is some assessment work we can do, but according to the, the park ranger there, who is not an engineer, but, um, told Joshua's trust that it absolutely is a dam and impounds water and, you know, we had a lot of rains this summer and the dam was, um, though, you know, it was, it was backing up water, even in its breached condition. So I don't, I mean, this is not my specialty. I, I've certainly, we've explored that Paul to, to say, well, you know, what if we just breached it? The state, um, you know, the state's take is that you do this assessment, you look at the drainage basin, you look at the hundred year storm event and, you if if there are um attributes that that um you know support it not being a dam then yes you could make a case to the state say this is not really a dam 
you know, because in its breach condition, it's yada, yada, yada. And they would, they would take that into consideration and possibly change the, the consent order um, that says, you know, it's out of compliance. So they would remove it from the list of dams out of compliance potentially. But, but what I understand is that it, that's pretty unlikely given the the rain event this year and how the, how everything looked, we're still going to do some type of assessment to figure this out um, because that would be the simplest. The other challenge with just removing it or breaching it is that there are dams downstream. And so I, I don't know, you know, this stuff well enough to know how, how breaching this dam would affect the downstream dams in terms of, you know, year round um, flow and, you know, how it would affect other wetlands that are currently not engaged. It's just, it's, it's more complicated than, than I think, you know, we would like it to be, but, but we're going to try and figure it out one way or another. So we've just got some work to do. It's, it's not, you know, you don't get answers on this stuff quickly from dam safety and, and it's a whole process. Thank you. Yeah. And Joshua's Trust owns the dam, and it has cost them a great deal of money to maintain and have the dam inspected. And um, <coughs> the property on which this dam is, um, it's that uh, came with, I don't know, a million and a half endowment. So they've been able to handle it, but they're, they've, they've sort of made this nature decision that we would never take another team. They're also afraid of the expense of the, all the infrastructure of the buildings and things like that that come with this property. Otherwise, they'd love to take it. The, the pond is the headwaters for the 10 Mile River. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, and I don't think the Girl Scouts were offering <laughs> were offering an endowment with this scam, were they? That's not part of our contract, no. But the appraisal did take into consideration the significant um, financial liability of it. But it's it's pretty hard to capture that thing, that in an appraisal, um, you know, without more knowledge and assessments and things like that, engineering. So you know, it was taken into consideration. I don't know how, um, yeah, how how any any new information would inform the appraisal better. But you know, it's possible that that we have to do that when it comes time to do an appraisal, an updated appraisal for the state, if they're willing partners. Right. Okay. Anything else? No, that's it for me. Okay. Thank you very much for attending. You're welcome to stay. Um, <laughs> But Thank it, you. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to kicking off this, you know, I know Callie's excited too, to kick off the trail stuff and, and I'll keep you, I'll send you all an email about the bill. I'll send it to Mark and Ann and they can distribute as, as uh, necessary. So anything, right. um, you know, anyone, you know, that, that might care about it, you know, feel free to send them information about it. We will. And uh, anything else we can do to help you, let us know. Will do. Thank you so much. And yeah.
Okay. Really? Perfect. Thank you, Honor. All Thanks. right. Be in touch soon. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs>
like something like Connecticut regional conservation. I don't even remember. I, I forget too. It's not reach, not resource development. Yeah. Resource development agency or something. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go with that. That's the problem with those letter crafts. Uh, yeah. Like, they don't tell you what they are. Anymore. I think it used to be rural development, and I think they it's changed it to resource yeah. development. I'm going to call my MP2, MPS2, and we can say that and nobody knows what it is. Yeah, and I don't want to use words anymore. I don't understand. It's, it's the same number of words, just letters instead of words. It's stupid. Exactly. That's my uh, editorial okay. comment. <laughs> well, it, anyway, so with the 12 Town Trail Alliance, we, we got the trail grant, right? And they developed. He's looking up what it was. Yeah, I'm trying to look it up quick. <laughs> um, and uh, they conducted this, I guess they have a plan now. And so I'm assuming that the latest rumblings are how are we going to implement this plan? So stay tuned. Okay, now I think I sent everybody an invitation. The Hop River <laughs> Preserve. Um, Let me interrupt you for one second. Okay, go ahead. What so is it's it? the Connecticut Resource Conservation and Development. Ah, there's a C. In. Okay, so Resource Conservation and Development. Okay. All right. Uh, Hop River Preserve. This is our piece of open space on the Hop River. And um, the town very generously funded a ground penetrating radar and magnetic something study of the mill ruins. And um, on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, February 20th, at five o'clock right here, the uh, scientist who does this GPR stuff is giving his report. So if you're interested, you're welcome. Will, will that be recorded, you think? Or it's going to be Zoom. It, it'll be Zoom. So it'll be Can we access it afterwards? Yeah. Mark, I don't know if it's a formal town meeting or anything, but it, if it's Zoom, then. Yeah, yeah I, it, it I think you, I, I'm not sure how to do this, but I think you can go into agendas and minutes and stuff and find the recordings. Is that true, Mark? Well, it's, yeah, it'll be, um, It'll be under a, a meeting. It'll be whatever it's called. Um, I guess it's the presentation of ground penetration radar by Dr. Leslie. Uh, it'll probably be under the Hop River Preserve, but I, I'll ask Jen how she's going to file it. But that's at five. Board of Selectmen starts at seven. So it would be before the Board of Selectmen meeting right. next week. So I'll, I'll run it with the Zoom out of the conference room. Okay. All right. Um, there will also be a walk at 3.30 at Hot River. Uh, yes. If you haven't seen the property and you want to, uh, Joan Hill said she would be at the property at 3.30 and show you where the ground penetrating radar was done. Just out of curiosity, what is the purpose of knowing whether, whether they're... It I, helps you know where to get. Why not excavating them, I assume, or, or are they? Um, it, it is possible that they will do uh, uh, an archaeological dig. I think probably it also has to do with because of bridge construction, you want to make sure no and nothing interferes, too, with that. 
I guess they don't know where the foundations are exactly. So that's what I do. Yeah. That's, that's my yeah. Yes. I, I don't know much about it. Um, but um, if not being an archaeologist, but um, Joan has uh, done this uh, with uh, the Friends of the State Archaeologist group that she participates in. And uh, she did a dig, she participated in a dig last summer in Glastonbury. And they, uh, it, it was a field that had never been flat never been developed, nothing was built on it. So it was like pristine from uh, the 1500s. And they found a lot of stuff there. Uh, actually, it might have been, it was Glastonbury or Weathersfield. It was a very early um, European settlement. So. That was pretty exciting. Um, our our um, site on Hawk River has been, um, shall we say, molested a number of times. <laughs> one one mill, then half an hour, but then put another on top of it. Then junk was filed on it, you know. So it's not pristine. And that's another reason you do the ground and the trading window. It helps you sort out what you're looking at, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Salmon River. Any news? Uh, no, we did have a meeting uh, past uh, at Thursday, so we can't say that. I. Uh, I did ask them to update the Columbia portion of the watershed recreation map, showing all the towns and lands that have been set aside. And I, I saw discrepancies in Columbia. So they did do that. Uh, I think it printed out a copy in black and white. It doesn't really do justice to what they sent me. So I think I'll send an attachment to each of you just for you to see this computer map the tax assessor's map, uh, designating, it's an update to what Mono Pond consists of, Mono Pond State Park. And, okay. um, but I'll send that to you anyway. Very good, thank you. We will meet next week, so there may, there'll be something next month. <laughs> but, friends of Mono Pond? So the big news, which I shared earlier, was we had applied for a grant at the end of January uh, for the control of aquatic invasive species in Mono Pond. I have no idea how long the process is going to take till we hear anything, but at least we're... Are you aware that the panel had spent quite a bit of money doing something for that already? And it was a study that was done. I don't know if we have access to that. I just heard a few years ago. But my plan was 2012, and all the... And it was court, and all he did was say, "Stand by, we'll see what happens." I thought we had more. Nope, nope. Well, they didn't actually study more than one. Twenty twelve, eight fifty. Twenty sixteen. Oh, 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 the, oh, the one. Oh, yes. Yeah. The oh, study. the first study. Yeah. The first study. A couple of times. Yeah, from um, Buffy. Buffy at um. Okay, that's what I thought. Out of the I don't know if there's any views, but that might be. I don't know. If it's, and support we're asking to do or what but. well he identified at that time they did a survey and they identified all the invasives in the pond but since then they have multiplied and i'm sorry yes that was 2012. courtland came in a few years later and just took a quick cursory look and said let's let it lie and we'll revisit it and we've never revisited it 
but it's at the point now that there's almost no fishing because you can't cast so many in into it. And uh, it's probably really time to do something. Hopefully, what would you do? Actually, I think, now this is my opinion, but I think it's a harvester. It's a harvester that goes in, pulls the plants out by the roots, puts them on board, takes them to the parking lot, unloads them. They then load them on a truck and probably take them to the dump. To, uh, that was keeps them from really going back into the nothing. But it is, there is, no, once you got invasives, this is forever. <laughs> So all you can do is attempt to every once in a while control them. Paul, for the way, do you have anything you wish to add? No, I think that is, is true. Uh, as far as the timing, uh, they do want to be on contract by May. So it's fairly quick, I guess, from the standpoint of the government version. But that's the only thing you know by time. Okay. Um, and this grant was for fifty thousand. Yeah, fifty thousand, and okay. uh, our our contribution of twelve five is we we suggest it's going to be in time for. Okay. And the both the dollars. Twelve five. Is there any cost to the town to be above and beyond the grant? Mm, not yet. I, I don't know. We we didn't put anything in the proposal about that, but lawyers are going to look look at the paperwork, etc. So there'll be some types of expenses, um, but uh, we didn't get into that detail of course. Have Have you discussed with the town this match? No, no. Oh, well, Mark is aware, um, and uh, as far as whether we talk to uh, the selectmen or not, um, there's been so. Friends of Mono Pond, Friends of Mono. Friends of Mono Pond is requesting the grant, and a part of the grant application is there's an amount of money that we would need to put in, and that would be the twelve thousand five hundred. But we can offset that with just volunteer hours associated with the project. Is that what it says? Yeah. I just want to know if I should, you know, start saving money for my team uh, member against. Right now, I, I didn't say, you know, depends on our product to come with twelve thousand five hundred dollars. I didn't see anything in the any of the saying, Bob, do you agree to spend a thousand dollars? I mean, how many numbers do we have? Well, we just figured you got it. Okay. <laughs> well, the thing is, we can, if, if and when they approve, if they approve it, then what you know, what are the next steps? If they disapprove it, we don't have to think very hard. So. And I'm assuming there's going to be hundreds of applications ahead of us in line, but maybe not. The uh, RFI runs out until they change the number, so there's probably going to be a preference on the amount of time, but we'll see. Yeah. So this is a study, I'm sorry, this is a, it's a study, so we're set, the grant be for a study to determine the oh, level of invasive. No, no, it's actually to do something. To do something, but mm -hmm. take action. Mm -hmm. That might be that. Study that we did might be helpful there. Yeah, that was ref that was referenced in the application. Yeah. Yep, because yeah. uh, Paul had brought that up to us, and Paul had done most of the legwork on putting the, the whole grant application together. So if it goes through, then I'm assuming it's sort of the remediation, basically, of invasive species. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's the intent. Yeah. Okay, so just out of curiosity, then, out of the conversation that we were having here, what is the extent? And long-term prognosis for remediation then before the invasive species come back into the garden. So for some of the years you're going to get well I, I think the study will help us answer that question more accurately. Okay. But uh the span of the contract is only for two years. Mm -hmm. And so whatever we do under this grant has got to be accomplished within a two year time frame. And uh we brought out about having studies you know in front of us to say that we would do harvesting likely or some other kind of treatment. And I need to come back and look at it again after that two years with you know some voluntary work or something like that, or maybe some follow-on lesser expensive study. Yeah. But we we've only in the proposal suggested 
what we're going to do in that two-year period. So the goal would be a long-term means of the. Well, I think yeah, the depending on on goal would be to have something more long-term, more residual. Yeah, thanks. And that's one of those things too that that if when if IMBA really gets into this whole master plan, and they, I would assume the pond being the name of the park that they would want to have some something in the master plan to say yeah based on this if we were able to do this study that this would influence what some other direction they'd want to go in their master plan for how to you know, remediate and everything else down the road. But, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, new business. Educate and inform. Okay, each of you has got a handout. Um, Chris and I and we worked on this. Uh, uh, preserving land for future generations. This is just kind of an overview on what the potential possibilities are for people that might want to preserve their land. Um, it gives them a, an idea of what the alternatives are, and then it ends with contact information. And there's there's a lot of places, uh, there are a lot of people that this could go to. I mean, I, I've already talked in previous meetings that I had a list of six or eight people that fell into the category of you at least you at least need to get some information to them, regardless of whether they act on it now. In the case of one particular couple, I know they want to do something and they had no idea whatsoever where to start. So this at least if, and what I saw, <clears throat> what I thought was if, if you think of anybody that maybe has a little land that this might be appropriate to send to, I'm thinking that our initial um, action should be to have a personal note from one of us with this. Like I could send it to this couple that I've met that would really like to do something now. And um uh, and we could just kind of divide this up among ourselves. But I think a nice little personal note on top of this, and then um, we see where it goes. Wouldn't it be better to have them meet one call one person so they get some direction which which one of these people might be more applicable? I probably make a farm trust thing would probably wouldn't be appropriate for a lot of them, depending on farm farm mm -hmm. capabilities. So maybe, you know. I don't know who that person would be, but the end might be wrong. Um, Mark Walter. I think Mark Walter might be the person to contact him. Well, but I might do it. You can direct someone to what makes most sense. So they're not, they're not picking out of here and getting discouraged because they call it to make a farm and trust. They tell them, are you kidding? This is worthless. You know what I mean? Very specific land to go to certain types of groups. So if we would, they want to get directions to say, yeah, you should check this group. This is, I mean, you got most of everybody here. I, I, I read this, okay, who should I call? I don't know. I think it should be nice to have one yep. contact. You can, these are suggested possibilities. You can talk to Walt or Mark or Ann, let's say. They, they can help you directly to which one is like the most appropriate. I don't know. That, that might be Chris, what do you think? I I think Mark and Anna, you pointed both that I think that's yeah, it, it, it might be interesting to check the resources that were there. And then I, I put, put the resources are good. Yeah, but yeah, that gives them an idea that, that there are places that they can that there are possibilities yeah. and then have direct say if you talk to this. So and so or so and so, they can help you and you can explain where you're at. And for a ball, for a ball, they think of this one. Maybe that's the thing we talk about signing it. Contact me, we can talk about it. And I can direct you to the sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think Mark would probably the best option for that. Yeah. 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 Except you'll send them to me. 
Oh, right. So, aim on the ball. So, what can we want to be like in this case where Paul's made the side back already in the house of where you Sure. And then you can send them in. Right. What might be interesting is to ask representatives from all three or four organizations to come into a forum and, in, you know, say, there's all these different possibilities and would be a 15 minute overview from each of these to see what might work for you. Yeah. We've, we've done forums. Know, this, you got some, uh, we're talking about got people not qualified, but they're already in pot and trot. Mm -hmm. So at this point, they need to get a contact and make an idea. Actually, we're talking about thinking about putting this in the views as a uh, something to the confirmation commission. Sure. Good. Um, and so I think we think Wait, why don't we put why don't we put my name or any member of the open space <laughs> committee? Then if they don't like me, they don't have to call me. <laughs> they can go on the website and That's true. although who doesn't like me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If I, I swear my name is written on the wall in this town hall. I get phone calls from people for cemetery lots and open space and conservation. Mm -hmm. oh, so you, are you okay with me just putting your name in there as a conservatory? We were sort of trying to avoid making this look like an open space propaganda piece. Um, so we're going to put it out in the conservation commission. But yeah. I don't think it the way. The way I look at it, it's information. You know, uh, everybody knows that they've got this piece of land and they want to do something with it, um, but they don't know what. Well, everybody knows a realtor or developer because they advertise, right? But they may not be aware that there are other things you can do with them. And so it's all about choice. It's not that we're pushing. Yeah, no. you're, you're right. just it's it's information. It's an, it's an excellent yeah. 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 So, yeah, thing. Yeah, facts here. I don't think it looks like you're looks like you're looking for people who are looking for help. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then you're giving them a contact that they can call and you're giving them some of the things that that person might suggest. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And we are, we've got a nice handout that really goes into this in much more detail. That we're, we're going to get some copies of that that we can hand out. With yes. It's, 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 um, but, you know, I, don't, I don't have a copy of it. It's online. Mm -hmm. But it's a beautiful brochure of the 10 pages with beautiful colored pictures. And it's put out by the Connecticut Land Conservation Council. And it's to, and it leans towards um, uh, land trust, contacting with land trust, because that's what they do. But I got in touch with Amy Patterson, and she's going to send us 50 copies so we'll um uh, we'll put them in i don't know if you everyone knows this but uh when someone moves into town the town clerk has a little uh welcome to columbia packet that tells you how recreation in the school and i don't know what else um, and we'll ask that this be Put in just for information purpose. So, welcome yeah. to town. You want to give away your land? Do a quick draw. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Then. Okay. Okay. Please don't just, make your I, I'll just tell you where, you know, mm -hmm. we, we try to conserve land in Columbia. But we, you know, so how many people move into town? So she won't use up fifty of them. The others uh, are for 
us or therefore, you know, somebody walks into Mark's office and says, I'd love to conserve my green, but he'll name one of these to, you know, or if well, we table Okay. Hey, Ann, can I just, um, I'm going to jump to another meeting. I wanted to throw in a plug for a meeting on February 29th at six o'clock in the evening. I think there's pizza. It's sort of kicking off of the sustainability effort again. So we yes. can get our uh, recognition with the state. And Jen has a lot more information on it. I asked her to just pop in and fill you in. But it might be something that could help open space um, with a sustainability um, subcommittee, just like what you're talking about. And you could come up with projects and um, drive it through sustainability of open space. Yep. Uh, we're, yeah, we're having someone from the state come in and help us uh, kick it off again. COVID kind of killed us. We were doing great. We started with the uh, farmer's markets and um, we started the art council with the Becca Senior Center. All those, well, the farmer's market kind of fizzled, but the art council is going strong. They just had a huge kickoff at, at the senior center yesterday for the art council. But yep. if you Poke your head in, Jen. I'll give you more information, but I got to run. Take okay. care. Have a great day, everyone. 29. 29, 6 o'clock. Bye. 6 o'clock. I assume here. Anything else to see? Okay. Um, I just want to report that the Connecticut Land Conservation Council. Conference is March 23rd. They'll be opening registration in a couple of weeks. I'll send you that. Okay. Um, That's a Wesleyan? Yes. Yep. Wesleyan. Yep. It's a really nice conference, too. Yeah. It's very popular. Okay. Um, also, uh, Joshua's Trust Annual Meeting as a speaker, uh, let's see, it's on April 13th, the JT annual meeting in Knowlton Hall. And where is that? Ashford. And, and their guest speaker is the executive director of um, 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 where is it? Maine's, uh, Maine Rivers Organization. And she's going to talk about fish ladders. And everybody's welcome. Um, Walker Holmes at TPL sent me this. Mono Pond State Park made the, made the annual Report again. And I would like to call attention to two um, articles in Columbia Views. Uh, one is on the Hot River with GDR. So we've got some ink in there. And the other one is from conservation and agriculture about um, community um, farming. Okay, anybody have anything else? Rob, did you want to talk about this? I'll ask, but I think it's um, I just thought a nice update would be good. Okay, Rob very generously did an updated map of Monoplan State Park. I guess we got a little bit of that. We did, in reference to the pine, pine suit, I'm going to be trying to produce a detailed map of where the act was, what's out there in the current, where it's not in this Wellwood, I guess, the one you know, but everyone thinks it's Kenny Road. Um, actually, go out there, there's no accurate map exactly where the bulbs are, where the fire fences are, and things like that. To actually determine 
if we were to build a trail where we could actually put it and actually be able to present something to someone saying this is what the town would like to do. So it's actually on paper. I'm, I'm waiting for better weather. weather. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Go in, go in. We do um, have trail maintenance down here. I do, um, but it's 10 o'clock and everyone's champing at the bit. Um, and um, I don't know about you, but Rick Park and Utley are great. Mono Pond is good and Zegna Farm is good, at least before the storms. Okay. Uh, oh, I, I know why that's there. Um, you're looking to start a trails group. We're looking, go ahead. Tell me no, we're looking to come up with um, a volunteer group to maintain trails in Columbia and all the different locations. And I was going to work with the prior rec director and have people, you know, have a database there and manage through some sort of application process with rec. But I, until we get a new rec director and see if that's still an option or not. Kind of on hold. What a shame that was. Okay. Mm -hmm. I move we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. We're done. Thank you all. Yes. <laughs>